introducing uh, Josh Legler, who is going to be giving us an awesome presentation today about using Schematron diagnostics. And uh, I'm as interested in seeing this as everyone else. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Go ahead and take it away, Josh. Okay, thanks, Chris. Uh, our late start uh, today is entirely my fault. I put this down for 10 o'clock Pacific time zone in my calendar and uh, was just, you know, looking forward to getting started here in about an hour. Uh, but here we are. So I apologize for keeping you all for these extra nine minutes before we got started. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, today's uh, session is really aimed at software developers. <clears throat> We're going to spend the bulk of our time uh, looking at XML data today. Um, as we uh, go through the presentation, I would uh, encourage you to stop me at any point for questions or clarification or discussion. So no need to, uh, to hold any of that till the end. Uh, let's take a look at our agenda today. So um, we're really gonna dive into using the Nemesis diagnostic data in Schematron validation results. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, XML schema validation or XSD. Uh, validation results and, and you know, what your software might try to do with those results and uh, some of the challenges uh, that come along with that. And then we're going to move into looking at the validation results that come out from doing Schematron validation. And specifically, we're going to dive into something called Nemesis Diagnostic, which is uh, diagnostics data that um, is uh, in the Schematron validation results that gives your software lots of information to try to guide your user to where they might go to fix uh, a particular problem that they have run into in validation. So as we look at the Nemesis diagnostic um, in, in you know, no particular order. We're gonna we're gonna hit all of these three sub points here. We're gonna look at element names and values. We're gonna look at XPath references, and and then interpreting those XPath references, um, so that you can take your user somewhere in your data entry form, um, or display additional info to your user to help them fix the problem. Uh, just a quick note, this presentation is based on Nemesis 3.5, but everything we'll cover today will apply to earlier versions of Nemesis 3, except uh, UUIDs. Those are only present in 3.5. Everything else is the same, though. Okay, so let's um, dive in here. Let's uh, take a look first at XML schema XSD validation results. We'll just spend a minute on this. Um, when you perform XSD or XML schema validation, uh, on a uh, Nemesis DEM dataset or EMS dataset document in your software, um, you get results that might look something like this, depending on the tool you're using. So uh, in this particular tool, it gave me a line number and a column number where the error occurred. And it tells me in sort of a technical cryptic, cryptic way that this is a, a pattern violation uh, that the value 840283 is not facet valid with respect to, and then it's got a regular expression pattern in there for type zip. So this is all stuff that's coming from the XSD. You know, there's a data type defined in the XSD called zip, which is for zip codes. That data type has a regular expression defined for it. The XML schema or XSD validator is... Uh, looking at a particular data element in the file that claims to be uh, compliant with the zip data type and should comply with that regular expression pattern. But in this case, it doesn't. Uh, it's got six numbers instead of something that would fit the pattern. And so it has this error and it fails validation. And um, I've shown you the actual XML data here that uh, caused this problem. And we see from looking at it that it's in dagency.08 inside of a particular agency service group. And line 49 is, is the line that it said it's on. Column 44 happens to be the column right after the closing bracket uh, of the end tag of dagency08. That's column 44. So for your software to kind of go in and figure out, okay, where's the problem? This gets pretty uh, complicated. 
there are some XML validation tools that'll help you to uh, find like an X path uh, to this problem. But if you're just going by line and column numbers, um, you know, it's, it's pretty tough. Uh, and when you have a developer look at it, then they go to that line and column number and, you know, with that human view of it, they're like, ah, oh, yeah, there's, there's a problem here. Our software is not um, properly uh, validating zip codes. Okay, we'll fix that in the software. Um, it gets even you know, more tricky, I guess, if you take your XML data and let's say that your um, XML document is one line, there's no carriage returns. You've either stripped to them or you never put them in in the first place when you generated the XML. That's perfectly valid XML. It's all on one line um, and it saves a little space. Uh, your file is a little smaller that way. But what does the validation result look like? Well, it says the problem's on line one, column 1886, right? So it's somewhere way down on that first, on that only line in the file um, that you've got that validation problem. And it can be uh, pretty tricky for your software to go try to figure out, well, where's the particular data element where that problem was? This is kind of okay, because as I said, when there's an XSD validation problem, that's a grammatical error in the, the data your software generated. And your software probably needs to um, have a fix applied to it. There's something you can do in your software code that will um, fix that and prevent that happening in the future. It's unlikely to be simply an end user data entry kind of problem where they picked a wrong choice or something. So XSD validation results, hard to automate your processing of those and present like a nice friendly message to the end user. But on the other hand, it really probably represents a software defect that you'll need to fix anyway as a developer. Okay, so now let's uh, look at schematron validation and the results that we get with schematron validation. When we move into schematron validation, it's, it's rule-based uh, validation and there are the national rules and then states can make up uh, rules that they use um, that they would like you to apply to all of your records. And these rules can be quote unquote arbitrary, right? I mean, they have some business uh, intent behind them, but essentially uh, any set of elements within the file could be looked at and compared um, and, and come up with some, you know, something that needs to be evaluated. And what that means is uh, it's not really possible for you to, to prevent all schematron issues using software design. Uh, these uh, schematron rules are sometimes going to uh, find or often find issues that were actually caused by the end user uh, entering inconsistent data uh, in their report. And so the end user really does need to have a friendly message presented to them and they need guidance about where they can go to fix the schematron validation issue. So that's what we're gonna look at now. And here's where we dive into our XML. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is a failed assert from a schematron validation process where we were processing an agency demographic data file and uh, we were processing it using the national uh, schematron schema for demographic data. And there was something in that file that caused uh, a validation issue. And the output that we get from the schematron validation process is itself an XML document and it's SVRL, the Schematron Validation Report Language. And so uh, all of the tags elements that you see in this uh, XML data here that start with the SVRL namespace prefix, those are tags in that Schematron Validation Report Language uh, namespace. And so let's take a look at what we get. We get a failed assert with several uh, attributes on it. We get a message that's in text, and then we get a diagnostic reference that is tagged as being the Nemesis diagnostic. Okay, so we're gonna dive into uh, these pieces in turn and, and uh, really kind of inspect them a little more. So first I wanna dive into the top here, the failed assert and um, the message text. So let's look at that first. So I've just sort of expanded it out so you can see it a little more. 
And there's some things you're uh, familiar with here that you're, you're probably using already in your software. Uh, the ID of the failed assert, <clears throat> um, this one says nem sch underscore d007. Um, here, let me get my highlighter on, sorry. Okay, so here's the ID. That tells you the uh, ID of the assert that was being checked that failed. So if you go to the national schematron rules for DEM dataset, you'll find an assert with that ID in it. And uh, you can you know, read up all the details on, on that assert and what it's looking for. The second thing you're surely using is the role attribute. And it says that this is a warning. So this tells you that uh, there was a validation problem, but um, you should not consider the file to be invalid. It's still valid, this is just a warning. <clears throat> um, and then let's look at the text, okay? So down here, in between these two tags, we have the actual message that, that the intent here is that whoever wrote the schematron file should write a message that should be readable for EMTs or like in this case, an agency data manager. EMS census tracts should belong to a county recorded in EMS agency service area counties in the state with which it is grouped. Okay, so the particular problem that we're looking at here is we have a census tract that based on its number, that they didn't say that they serve the county that that census tract is located in. Um, and then we've got this long, string here of things, the location attribute. And I wanna clean this up a little bit for readability. Before I do that, I would like to explain what's going on here. Okay, so um, you'll see, first of all, this little star colon before each of these um, tags. And by the way, this is an XPath expression to a specific spot in the demographic data file that was being processed. Okay, so the star colon says that, um, uh, it's a wild card for the namespace. So the problem that, that caused this failed assert is in dem data set in, in any namespace, but then it puts in the namespace qualifier here. The namespace URI is the Nemesis uh, namespace. Okay, so that's what's happening there with that. It's just saying that uh, this is in the dem data set in the Nemesis namespace. Well, uh, pretty much everything in a Nemesis um, DEM data set or EMS data set document is in the Nemesis namespace, um, except for XSI nil attributes. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit just for human readability. You might look at it this way, okay? So the failed assert, the context where that happened was in the first instance of DEM data set in the file. And within that, it was in the first instance of demographic report. It was in the first instance of the D agency section. And it was in the second instance of D agency dot agency service group. And it was the first instance of D agency dot zero seven within that group. That was the context of this failed assert. Now, um, the the challenge here though, is that um, the context for this failed assert could be somewhat arbitrary. It may have been um, selected that way by the person who wrote uh, or the software who generated the schematron file, uh, basically for convenience. It doesn't necessarily identify the element where there's a problem where the user might need to fix it. It really just um, says, this is, this is the context we were in when we found this issue. So now I want to take a look at the, the diagnostic output and see how that gives you additional, more um, precise information that you can use in your software to direct your user somewhere to fix a problem. Okay, so here's the diagnostic reference from that failed assert. And first of all, we notice that it has um, a reference here that it's Nemesis Diagnostic. And um, Every schematron schema that is used for Nemesis, whether it's national or state level schemas, is required to include the Nemesis diagnostic section in the schematron schema, which means you can count on this being here. Every time you run schematron validation, you, whenever you get a failed assert, you're going to get a diagnostic reference called Nemesis diagnostic. 
You could get other um, diagnostic references as well. I haven't seen any states using additional diagnostic references, but it is uh, allowable. Okay, so we've got our diagnostic reference here. And you'll notice that then all of these data elements within the diagnostic reference are in the Nemesis namespace. Okay, so we're no longer in the Schematron namespace. This is all Nemesis specific here. First, there's a chunk here called a uh, record. And within the record, we give you the identifiers that would identify the specific uh, either agency demographic report or patient care report where the uh, issue occurred. So we've got uh, the agency state ID, uh, their agency number, the agency's state. And then I'll, um, I'll take a little bit of time to explain how the UUID <clears throat> is found. This would be Nemesis 3.5 only. And if this was a patient care report, you would also get eRecord.01, the patient care report number in here. So if you had a demographic file that had uh, demographic reports for multiple agencies in it, then this uh, record section of the diagnostic tells you which agency uh, the failure happened in. If you had a, an EMS data set file with 100 patient care reports in it, this is going to allow you to identify which patient care report the problem happened in. This information is almost always here, but not absolutely always. If there was a validation error, for example, with um, custom element configuration data, that is outside of a patient care report. It's outside of a demographic report. And so there will be uh, no identifiers for that. Um, but that would only happen once per file. So you know which, you know where to look. Okay, so that's the record piece. Now let's look at the um, elements uh, piece. So this, the, the person or software that wrote the Schematron file can provide uh, information in, um, in the rule itself that says essentially, hey, if this assert fails, then these are the data elements that the user probably needs to visit to fix this problem. And they can uh, list multiple, you know, as many elements as they think would be helpful uh, in that configuration. That's all on the Schematron schema side. And what you see when you run the validation uh, process is this output here. And we can see here that we have an element and we have some information about this element. We have the location, the X path to that element. And um, just as before, I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, clean up that X path, just so it's a little more human readable for us. So it's like this. And we also have the value um, for that element as well. And we're also gonna have any attributes that were on that element in the uh, file um, that was being validated. So um, if it had you know, a not value attribute or a pertinent negative attribute, then those attributes would be here as attributes on this, on this uh, element. Okay, let's look at that X path, right? This tells you exactly where uh, the user should go to fix this problem. They should go to the first D-Agency 07 within the second D-Agency service group within D-Agency within the first demographic report within DEM data set. Let's take a look at the, um, the actual XML data that was being validated here. I've uh, truncated things a little bit, but we can see here now as we, I, I've got the X path over here in this box so we can look at it. So uh, your software then can, can take that X path and just running X path queries, it can find the spot in the file and get information about that spot and show it to the end user. So it finds DEM data set, the first instance of DEM data set. In this case, there's only always gonna be one. The first demographic report, the first D agency, and there's always only one D agency within a demographic report. Okay, and then we want the second D 
dagency.agency service group. So here's the first dagency.agency service group. We don't want that one. We want the second one. So that's this one here. And then we want the first instance of dagency07 within that service group. That's the one that, that caused the validation issue. So that's how you can use the X path. You know, we're using it here kind of as humans to, to you know, parse through that and step through it, but your software can use that X path and uh, just um, run a query against the XML data that you just validated. So we know you have that XML data handy because you just ran it through validation process. And now you can use X paths to go find the data in that file and find out information about it that you might show to your end user. Okay, so I said I would tell you a little bit more. I'm going to go up, back up now. Um, a little bit more about the UUID that's selected here. So the UUID that shows up here is the UUID that's either on the data element that, um, uh, or the, the context where the validation failure happened, or um, the, the next parent, the first ancestor that has a UUID. So we'll look here, for example, so this problem happened in dagency07. dagency07 doesn't have a UUID, um, but we do have a UUID for agency service group. And so it picked that UUID. And so you'll see this UUID, you know, ending with A0. If I go back up to that previous slide, you know, here it is, that UUID, the A0 uh, UUID. So it's, it's picking the first UUID it finds as it goes up the chain. When you're validating a patient care report, there's only one UUID and that's on the patient care report data element itself. And so that UUID allows you to specifically identify which patient care report has the problem. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we're gonna uh, move now to looking at uh, validation results on EMS data set, looking at a patient care report. Um, but before I dive into this one, I just wanna pause a little bit. So we're definitely digging into XML data here, lots of code on the screen, um, and just wanna kind of do a check-in so far. Um, feel free to unmute or put stuff in the chat. Um, is this making sense so far? And can you see uh, you know, how your software might use the information provided in diagnostic data? And do you have any questions about how your software uh, might use that information? Okay, so let's see. Okay, so Dennis was asking what software are you using to view this, like uh, Notepad++ or what? Um, I, uh, this is stuff that I copied and pasted into a PowerPoint slide, but I was using um, uh, Visual Studio Code uh, to grab my um, screenshots and copy paste for this. Uh, in Visual Studio Code, if you have the XML tools um, uh, extension, then uh, you can also play around with some XPath stuff there. So let me uh, see if I can get you a quick example. Um, so I gotta get my Zoom stuff out of the way here. And let's look at, okay. Um, uh, whoops, well, okay, I'll just pick a random example here. So here's an SVRL output from a Schematron validation process. Um, here's the file that was being validated. And uh, this is not the particular file I was using in the example, but here's a dagency07, you know, right here. Um, you know, this Visual Studio Code is giving me that X path up here in a little more human readable way. I know this will be small on your screens, um, but it shows me that I'm in Dem Dataset, Demographic Report, dagency Service Group, dagency 7 I can see that there are multiple service groups and within the service group, multiple dagency 07s all of that. So that's kind of showing me basically the X path um, to this spot. Um, it, this also has um, 
a tool for evaluating an XPath. So I can you know, put in some XPath uh, to, to see what it gives me. Um, and then uh, Luis uh, said, I assist from uh, Portugal in Europe. Um, is there any similar project like Nemesis here? Uh, I don't know, actually. Um, yeah, wish I had an answer for you. Any other questions or um, you know, comments on what we've looked at so far? Okay, so next I'm going to dive into um, a, just a very similar example, except that this was on validating a patient care report uh, because that's where everyone tends to live most of the time is in patient care report data. So we have a failed assert. Um, that assert uh, you know, it has an ID, so we know which assert failed. Uh, whoops. Uh, we know that it's a warning, it's not an error, so we can still consider the file valid. There is a location that has the XPath of the context uh, of the rule where the assert failed. We have our message, that's what we're gonna display to the end user for sure. And then we have our Nemesis diagnostic reference. And um, so let's, let's dig in, zoom in a little to this Nemesis diagnostic reference. Okay, so uh, we have the record identifiers here. All right, where'd my mouse go? <laughs> okay, <laughs> there it is. Uh, we have the record identifiers that identify the specific patient care report where this error occurred, uh, including eRecord01. And if you're looking at Nemesis 3.5, then uh, you'll also see the UUID for that patient care report. And then within the elements section, this one has one element that the Schematron uh, schema creator has decided uh, that, that you could highlight for your users. Again, I'm gonna clean up the XPath here just for human readability. So this element is in EMS dataset, in the header, in the first patient care report, in the vital signs section, vitals, in the third set of vital signs, and it's evitals.01. That element uh, has a not value. So that's the not value for not recorded. Um, and, and so therefore is also nil um, and empty. So the message we can see if I go back, you know, the message was the date and time that vital signs taken should be recorded. And in this case, it's saying, here's the element that had the problem that your user needs to look at. Here's the X path to that element, clean it up a little, and it's not recorded. It doesn't have a value. Okay, so if we look at the um, data that was being validated, this is our Nemesis EMS data set document. So we can go through the X path again, EMS data set, here's header, here's the first patient care report, there's the UUID from that first patient care report. Here's the D-Agency 1, 2, and 4, and E-Record 01, all the identifiers. We see them there. Uh, we're in the vitals section, and we're in the third group of vitals. So there's one, two, three. Here's our third vital group. And then we're in E-Vitals.01 within that vitals group. So there's the XPath gets you to that spot. Um, where the problem was. Okay, so um, let me kind of uh, bring this back up. We're gonna come back out of the XML code now and uh, just talk about some ideas uh, that I might leave you with uh, that you could think about implementing in your software products. Okay, so one idea is you can look up element names, right? So if we go back to this example, um, the X path, let's go all the way back to the validation results. Okay, this, the final piece of the X path is gonna be a Nemesis data element, um, a kind of a, a terminal element, if you will. Well, eVitals.01, that, that has a name that um, has been uh, defined in the XML schema, the XSD. So if you have some metadata about the uh, Nemesis schema, you know that you can look up eVitals.01 and, and you can get a name. You know, it's the date and time vital signs taken. 
So, or in the earlier example, if it was D agency 07, you can show your end user that that's EMS agency census tracks, or maybe you've relabeled that within your product. As long as you've maintained some metadata about the relabeling you've done, you could give them the label of the element as, as it appears in their data entry screens. Another thing to think about is displaying element and attribute values. So uh, we saw in this example up here where um, you know, evitals.01 had a not value. If we go up to our validation results, uh, you know, we had that NV attribute there with the value. Uh, if you show that code to the end user, it's not particularly helpful to them, um, but, but you know that the not value codes can be looked up. And so uh, you can say, ah, not applicable. And that's what you can show to the end user. Uh, you know which elements are coded elements uh, because the XSD has enumerated lists for those elements. So if you're in an element that's a coded element, you know that you can look up the value to get the label. So in this case, uh, you know, like level of service, uh, community paramedicine instead of the code. You can take date time values or timestamps and you can parse those out to a human readable form and you know, put it in the right time zone for the user, all of that. And then some elements, they really are just text, uh, like a street address. And uh, so no lookups are needed. You can display that uh, data to the user. So let's go up again here. So if, if um, let's go up to our demographic example. So we said there's an element we got the X path. We know it's D agency 07, so we can look that up and say it's agency census tracks. And there's the actual value that was recorded for that element. And the user probably needs to fix that value. So that's a value you can show to the user. You can say, here's the value you recorded um, in this element that probably has a, an issue. Okay. Uh, another idea for um, your UI development is to use the X path, go ahead and parse those X paths and look up and display helpful related data. So let's uh, look, for example, um, let's say the validation process, uh, there, was a, there was a warning or error uh, related to something in personnel data, dpersonnel.something. And uh, the schematron, whoever created the schematron file, they may have pulled certain data elements um, to include in the diagnostics, um, whatever it was. And so you can show that data to your uh, end user, but you don't have to stop there. Um, because you know that the, uh, the elements were in the D personnel section, you could navigate using relative XPath references. You could navigate from that element up to the D personnel .personnel group. And from there, navigate back down to any of the data that you think is helpful within the dpersonnel section. So you might navigate to uh, dpersonnel.012 or 3, which would give them the name of the personnel. Uh, you might look at dpersonnel.21, uh, which would be their agency ID, the ID number assigned to that personnel by the agency. Any of those additional pieces of information might help your user to go find the right personnel uh, in your demographic setup that needs to be uh, looked at and fixed. Or if it was in D facility somewhere, you know, D facility.15, there was a phone number that, you know, wasn't right or whatever. Uh, you might navigate back up to D facility, facility group and look at D facility.02 or 03, the facility's name or ID and show that to your end user and say, this is the facility uh, that had the problem. So keep in mind that once you've got an X path to an element, you, you can go relative X paths from there, back up the tree to anywhere else in the document that uh, might be relevant. Okay, and finally, I think this really, uh, from my perspective, this is the holy grail of what you can do in your UI. And that is to take the user to the element that had the problem in the data entry form. So you have a data entry form, you store this data in a database, you generate it into XML format, and it gets validated. 
And so the challenge then is to kind of work backwards on that and to say, okay, we know where the problem was in the XML because we have the X path. So where is that in the data entry form? So for example, this uh, one that we looked at, you know, where the element that, that indicated that it had a problem was in the third set of vital signs and it was evitals.01. Okay, so in your UI, then can you provide a link to your user that navigates your user to the third set of vital signs in the data entry form and takes them to the date and time field and says, here's the spot where you need to fix this. And so that's the, the best ideal because you've taken the user directly to the spot where they can fix the problem. And is, there's no confusion in their mind about where they need to go. There will be uh, um, validation results that will list multiple data elements that could have been involved in the problem. Um, for example, if date and time values are out of order, well, maybe they need to fix their unit notified time, or maybe they need to fix their at scene time. We don't know which, but one of them has to change to get in order. So you can give them that ability to navigate to both of those elements, check them out uh, and fix the one that needs to be fixed. Okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna uh, open it back up for questions uh, right before we do that. Um, I do want to point you to the Nemesis V3 Schematron guide. Uh, pages 15 and 16 have the technical reference for what I covered today. So they go all through the um, Nemesis diagnostic section and uh, explain the different elements that are in that uh, diagnostic output, uh, what they mean and how they might be interpreted. So that's your reference that you can go back to, of course, as well as the, the recording of uh, this presentation now. All right, so uh, that wraps up what I wanted to show you today, and I'd love to uh, open it up for discussion here. Um, you know, things that you might be thinking about, uh, challenges uh, that I might be able to help you, you know, with ideas on, things like that. Really, this, this goal being that we, we use this NEMSIS Schematron Diagnostic Info to provide a, a richer experience to the end users to help them really uh, zoom in to the spot where they can fix a problem. So I'll open it up now if you have any questions on what I've covered um, or just you know, further discussion, comments, considerations, challenges, whatever. Josh, yeah. um, this, this is Judy in Texas. Can you go back to where you simplify that code? Um, yeah, there yeah. on location. Mm -hmm. Show us how you changed it to the more human language. Yeah, so uh, what I did here is, is um, as I look at this, uh, this is an XPath statement and a software product could just take this and run with it. Um, it's going to find the, uh, th this is the root of the file, and it's going to find an EMS data set element. And it's going to be an EMS data set element where the namespace for that element is the Nemesis namespace. And it's finding the first instance of that element. And, and so that's just a really roundabout way of saying that all these elements are in the Nemesis namespace, uh, which they are because we're validating a Nemesis file. So if I clean that up, if I, if I were to say, okay, we know we're in the Nemesis namespace, then that's what I was removing there was all the, those namespace, namespace qualifiers so that we could, as humans, we could just look at the actual element names um, you know, a little more cleanly here. So we're looking at the EMS data set element and then the header and then patient care report, et cetera. So is there a key or something that you have to click to do that? Uh, no, I just cleaned that up for us for readability. Okay. Um, yeah, the software product would just take this big messy looking XPath and run with it. Okay, okay. Sorry, I missed that earlier. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.
Any other uh, discussion? Okay, well, if not, then I think we'll uh, call it a wrap on this. I hope it's useful to you software developers and gives you some ideas that you can chew on for um, kind of improving that UI experience for your users with regard to uh, how they handle Schematron validation. And uh, really there's some great opportunities here, great potential for really taking your users to the spot they need to fix. Um, right within your UI, right within your data entry forms. So hope that gives you some good uh, information to go on and some good ideas for development efforts. Um, all right, that wraps it up. Uh, Chris, back to you, I guess. Cool, thank you very much, Josh. Uh, insightful as always, thanks for kicking off our uh, training series here in the new year and with great information. Uh, you're getting a lot of thanks in the, in the chat there. So uh, our thanks to you for participating today and all the great questions and whatnot. Uh, once again, as Josh mentioned, this uh, presentation is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube uh, site uh, very shortly. So if there is something here that you want to refer back to uh, when you're working on it, feel free to uh, check that out there. And also if you're watching the video or if you come up with another question or uh, about any of the information that we can help provide here at the NEMSYS, uh, at the NEMSYS TAC, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out and ask us questions. Uh, we love answering things. We love helping people solve problems here. So. Uh, once again, Happy New Year, everybody, and I uh, hope to see you back for the uh, for more trainings and for the V3 calls and for everything else we're going to do through this awesome year. Thanks again. Yeah.